I'm Christine Cam and welcome to Tuesday Tutorial. I'm here to help you speak French easily using my real French method and that is trying to make your French rewarding, effective and adventurous learning. And tonight we're looking at the difference between se and il est. So I'm going to get straight into it. We'll share screens and go for it. And off we go. Donc, c'est se et il est. And what we're looking at tonight is when to use se, when to use il est, and that vague area in between. And that's the little bit that's quite important. So here we go. I want you to consider this huge list of things that we're going to cover today as quickly as I possibly can. So if you know somebody who you know is struggling with se or il est, get sharing this now. Please help other people learn French. Here's the list. We're going to look at these. They are what we cover. So if any of these are adaptable for you in your life, make them realistic to you. And off we go. On s'y met. C'est ou il est. Now, very easily, we're going to generalize because that's how you get going at the beginning. My daughter learned all animals were dogs at first because it moved around on four legs and then she got specific. That's great. Don't worry about overgeneralizing. It's a start. So se literally means it is, that is. Se plus e, se and e squished together sounding like se. Most commonly heard, c'est trop beau. Oh, it's so beautiful. Literally, it's too beautiful, but we don't translate word for word in French. We translate the idea. So, c'est trop beau. Okay, and then we go across here and we look at il est, meaning he is. Okay, it could be elle est if it was a girl, but here it's il est. Il est trop mignon. He's too cute. He's so cute. And there we go. That is my dog Domino when he was a little puppy last year. Il est trop mignon. Now, we also use se for pointing something out. Being demonstrative. So you're pointing something out here. This dog, this is my dog Leo in the snow last year as we went up on immersive homestay. Um, basically, ce chien, c'est un labrador. This dog is a Labrador. Notice I've translated that, that dog, it's a Labrador. You can learn French by listening to the French people making mistakes. We would say, that dog, it, that dog is a Labrador. Okay, but the French will cut it up a little. Ce chien, c'est un Labrador. And they'll use c'est because you're pointing it out. And you're marking a pause because you're actually pointing something out. Um, il est à moi. Now we're being specific. Il est à moi. He. We're talking him now. Okay. Il est à moi. Also sharing your opinion, which I've already done, saying c'est mignon. Okay. So here's a great place. C'est un endroit splendide. It's a great place. I hear place so much. It's a square in town where in summer you want to sit out and have beautiful um, glasses of beer, wine, water, Montello, whatever it is, and just watch the world go by on a French terrace in the middle of town or the village. But actually, it's a place, it's an endroit. So, c'est un endroit splendide. You're declaring your feelings for this place. C'est le plus beau paysage que je n'ai vu. Okay, it's the nicest landscape I've seen. Look at that beautiful opinion. And it is. Although it's not true, I've seen better, but this is a beautiful place in the world. This is um, in the Pyrenees Mountains. We just went for a walk up in the snow with the dogs. So, c'est le plus beau paysage que je n'ai vu. And now, those of you who kind of get this, there's a little subjunctive in here. Okay, note the subjunctive. It's the condition of a superlative plus que, consequently, you're going to say que je n'ai vu. This is an optional extra. It's called the redundant no. 
<laughs> okay, but basically, you're passing an opinion, c'est le plus beau paysage <laughs> that I have ever seen. Okay, moving on. Emphasizing an opinion is really good. Like, she's a great actress. C'est une actrice formidable. You will not hear, elle est une actrice formidable. You're emphasizing it. It's stronger that way to the French ear. It's uncomfortable to the English ear. Get used to it. Find lots of situations where you can say somebody is a good something. C'est une professeur formidable. C'est un chien incroyablement obéissant. C'est une actrice formidable. C'est une mère super um, généreuse. Okay? So using here, de, say here, does make it much more stronger. And yes, it's uncomfortable to the English brain. Get over it. That's what it is. Okay? That's the hardest thing now. And the only way you can get over it is by convincing your brain that it's normal. The only reason it feels uncomfortable, it's not normal. More. It's not normalized. Consequently, it feels uncomfortable. How do you normalize it and make it comfortable? You use it loads, you make it normal, you put it round everywhere, and you focus on listening to it. Now, while you're learning it and you're putting post-it notes and the things all over, when you're listening to a bit of radio, or watching a TV or something, it just pops up at you and you go, oh! and you, you identify it and it starts becoming normal. It takes time. But don't, don't rush it. Just don't worry about how long it takes. Just set the process going at least. So, elle a joué dans le film The English Patient. She played in the film English Patient. I just put her up there. Elle a joué. So that's she played. I'm going to carry on. A place. So, Paris, c'est une ville romantique. Would you say Paris est une ville romantique? Yes, if you want, but you're emphasizing your point. Paris, c'est une ville romantique. Ici, c'est un village très petit. <laughs> Using ça here does make it stronger again. And here we try and use L because it's she. So do take care with your L and il. But this time you're just emphasizing a place. So you can say ça. Um, Paris, c'est en France. Paris, c'est la capitale de la France. A time period is interesting. Uh, I'm watching the series Outlander at the moment, so it just had to uh, come into my lesson here. So, Outlander, c'est une série qui représente la période des guerres entre l'Écosse et l'Angleterre. So it represents the period. Notice I've gone straight into the series outland that represents the period of the wars between Scotland and England. I've even turned the sentence around. Okay, because it sounds like an English translation. So I've gone French. Outlander, c'est une série. I'm using c'est. C'est une série. And then you're going to describe what it is. In exactly the same way you have une voiture bleue. Tell me what it is. Describe it later. Moving on. Even if it's here in English, you can say c'est because you're emphasizing. C'est lui que j'aime le plus dans la série. He's the one. Look, you would say it is him. We're using c'est again. We're going French. C'est lui que j'aime le plus. Okay. C'est un bel acteur. So you're passing your opinion, you're describing it, and you're emphasizing it. He's a handsome actor. Okay. Notice Belle. You think, hang on, Christine, beau means handsome. What's going on? Well, beau is fine, but if you use beau, you've got two vowels that are going to stop uncomfortably. C'est un beau acteur, quite hard to pronounce. So you're going to put an L in and use the bel instead of beau. C'est un bel acteur. It's not the feminine version, bel avec Deux L, e. Okay, it's the mass, it's the liaison version, the link sound version, if you wish. Okay, here we go. So you're also going to use describe, uh, this time without an article. So we're going on to the zone of il air now. So 
Il est l'acteur que j'aime le plus dans la série. Now we're being really specific. OK? So, il est l'acteur que j'aime le plus. Il est le meilleur acteur de la série. We are really drilling down. Il est. I'm pointing at something. Il est. OK? Le meilleur acteur de la série. And with jobs. Il est acteur. Je suis professeur. Il est acteur. Elle est um, to be um, doc doctor. So your intention, specific or general. Now, je préfère le chocolat noir dans ma mousse au chocolat. Il est délicieux. Why? Because the specific reference is to the dark chocolate as opposed to any other. Okay, je préfère le chocolat noir dans ma mousse au chocolat. Il est, what is delicious? Dark chocolate, not the mousse in general. This time, it's not general, okay? Je, uh, it is general, excuse me. Je préfère le chocolat noir dans ma mousse au chocolat. C'est délicieux. Like, that's great, that's lovely, it's delicious like that. The whole thing in general, okay? The whole experience of having dark chocolate in the mousse. Whereas this one is specific, more general. Back to the first point, wasn't it? Okay, time is il. Il, 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 always. Il est une heure. Il est deux heures et demie. Il est quatre heures moins le quart. Il est le moment de finir. The impersonal il. And this one is getting a little bit more complex. What is the impersonal il? Well, it's, it's, it's the it, because it and he are the same word. So this time when you want to say it, just in, in general, Okay, here, il est le moment de partir. It's time to go. It's the impersonal it. Il est temps de partir. Also, il est is used in more formal situations than c'est. So, the French will mess it up a little bit for you. This is where the vague line happens. And in speaking, they will say c'est. And they are representing il. And This is typical of French speaking. If you're going to be perfectly technically correct, you should be saying il est. Okay? In this case, when it's like, uh, il est le moment de partir. However, you'll hear a French person go, oh, c'est le moment de partir. You're like, what? <laughs> But it's just speaking, so he's kind of made it less formal, less technically correct. Because we're not going to be perfectly correct all the time, are we? Okay, and we have an easier, sloppier way of saying it. Set is more common, so it will pop out of a French person's mouth much more easily. It's as simple as that. So it sounds correct to a French person. Ill with the subjunctive. <laughs> right. Il est important que tu sois positif ou positive. This is the ill impersonal, and it's got the subjunctive because you've got it followed by You, I'll point them out here. Il est important que tu sois positive. So you've got que in the middle like a sandwich. And you've got two different subjects. You've got il and tu. Each time I've used the same actually. Oops. Il and tu, il and tu. So il est important que tu sois positive. Il est essentiel que tu sois à l'heure. Um, il faut que tu fasses tes devoirs. So a recap. C'est is... Most general, il is more specific, used for time, it's impersonal, the impersonal e, and it's used for the subjunctive as well, like il est, the impersonal subjunctive sentences. That's it. Merci.